He is salvation. There's no other name. He is our faith. He's our shield of faith. He is truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. He is the gospel. He is salvation. There's no other name. He is the shield of faith. We cannot be defeated. We cannot be overcome. Welcome to The Light of Truth. We are so grateful that you joined us today. I'm telling you, God is doing amazing things through this ministry, reaching people all over the country, and we're so thankful that you are one of them that has chosen to be a part of it. So um, enjoy yourself. Receive everything you have from the Lord. We'll be back with you in just a little bit. Exodus 39, are you there? Yeah. Listen to this. From the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, they made woven garments for ministering in the sanctuary. They also made sacred garments for Aaron as the Lord commanded Moses. They made the ephod of gold and blue, purple and scarlet yarn, and of finely twisted linen. They hammered out thin sheets of gold and cut strands to be worked into the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen, the work of skilled hands. They made shoulder pieces of, for the ephod which were attached to two of its corners so it could be fastened. Its skillfully woven waistband was like it, of one piece with the ephod and made with gold and with blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and with finely twisted linen, linen as the Lord commanded Moses. They mounted the onyx stones in gold filigree settings and engraved them like a seal with the names of the sons of Israel. Then they fastened them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as memorial stones for the sons of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses. They fashioned the breastplate or the breastpiece, the work of skilled craftsmen. They made it like the ephod of gold and of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and of finely twisted linen. It was square, a span long and a span wide, and folded double. Then they mounted four rows of precious stones on it. The first row was carnelian, the second chrysolite and beryl, the second row was turquoise, lapis lazuli, and emerald. The third row was Jason, agate, and amethyst. The fourth row was topaz, onyx, and jasper. They, they were mounted in gold filigree settings. There were 12 stones, one for each of the names of the sons of Israel, and each grave engraved with a, like a seal with the name of one of the 12 tribes. I could read on, but there's something that you see over and over and over, and it's as the Lord commanded Moses. Moses had been on the mountain, and the Lord had spoken to him very, very clearly how he wanted things done. And, and if, if you pay attention here, it is easy to see that the Lord is very interested with details. Yes. I mean, it's details, Details, details. And I just, I, for a moment, because I think we get so lackadaisical at times, I just want you to consider the details of this passage. I would encourage you to read chapters 38, 39, and 40. Because you'll, you'll read it again and again as the Lord commanded Moses. Moses had been on the mountain. He had been with God. And God gave him very specific directions. And Moses came off the mountain and he was following these directions. And, and one of the things that just really stood out to me is they hammered this gold extremely flat and then cut threads out of it. And wove it into the yarn. Yeah. The Bible says very skilled hands. I would say so. Yes. Yeah. 
And you've got to understand that what Moses came off the mountain with was a replica of what is in heaven. There, there is a holy place in heaven. There is a tabernacle in heaven. And the tabernacle of Moses is a pattern after the one in heaven. That's what the Bible says. There is a holy city in heaven. It's going to come down, if you believe the revelation, it's going to come down and set on earth. 1,600 miles square. 1600, it's a 1,600 mile cube. I believe it's a mountain. Is what I believe it is. I mean, you stop and think about it. It's going to take a lot of room for us all to live in. I think a 1,600 mile cube is going to be sufficient. It's just as tall as it is wide. That's a lot of space. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Didn't He say that? He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Amen. Colors, materials considered very valuable and precious on this planet, used in the garments for those ministering to God and the people. The priest's garments were, were precious. I mean, very valuable if you consider the, the materials used. Right? Yeah. Details, details, details and all as the Lord commanded Moses now what is God telling us through this passage see we could go through and we could tell you what all the stones represent we could go through and tell you what the yarn represents and that's all valuable and it's good uh, I'm, I don't discount that at all but, but what I want to know is what does this mean for us because everything in the Old Testament is type and shadow for us right I mean, we look at them, they are our examples as to what to do and what not to do. And so, what, what is all this detail in the tapestry of the priest? What does this have to do with us? I mean, we are a kingdom of priests. We are. So what are we clothed with? What, 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 is, what is the tapestry that lays over us? What, 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 what detail has God clothed us with? And even more important, what is, what is the clothes that we're supposed to put on ourselves? Are we paying attention to the details? See, Moses went on the mountain and he got direction from God. Yeah. Are we going to the mountain and getting the details for our lives? Or are we just going through the motions and hoping maybe some teacher or some preacher or somebody will speak to us? I mean, we're always having people, and I'm just as guilty as anybody, there's always somebody that's speaking to me. At one time it was Jake's, at one time it was Joyce Meyer, one time it was, uh, you know, just I can go through the list of all these people that speak to me, and, and we're looking for somebody that speaks to us. And what we should be doing is look to the one that is speaking to them all. Because yes. He wants to speak to us and He wants to give us details. Yes. Because Moses had to go on the mountain because nobody else could go near to God. Right. But when Jesus Christ came, that's what the Word says. The, the law of sin and death came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Yes. Moses had to go on the mountain for the people, but nobody has to go to the mountain for us. Yeah. Right. We can go there as much as we want. Yes. That's why Leonard Ravenhill, one of his famous statements, he said it often. He said, I can tell you how much God you have, however much you want. Yeah. Exactly. That's good. <laughs> Are we living for Jesus as an afterthought or are we on the mountain with God getting the details for our lives? In Jeremiah chapter 5, man, I, I don't even like the book Jeremiah. I don't know about you all, but I don't like it. Woo! I have to read it twice a year and I don't like it. I'm just being honest. What, are you going to sit up here and lie about it? 
man, I love Jeremiah, God. Well, you're a dirty, lying dog. You don't like it. You're right, God. I don't like it. I don't like this book at all. Jeremiah 5, verse 30, it says, A horrible and shocking thing. Jeremiah 5, chapter 5, verse 30. A horrible, and this is the NIV, a horrible and shocking thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy lies. And the priests rule by their own authority. We've been talking about authority. Well, are we rule? We're a kingdom of priests here. Are we ruling by our authority? Or are we ruling by God's? And listen to what the Lord said. And my people love it this way. The people love it when the, the prophets are prophesying lies. The people love it when the priests are operating by their own authority. But here's the question. But what will you do in the end? But what will you do in the end? It doesn't matter what we like about any of this stuff. It doesn't matter uh, what, what voices we're listening to. It doesn't matter what, what moves us, what motivates us, what speaks to us. What really matters is where we at in all of this when this thing winds up. Have we paid attention to God on the mountain and gotten the details for our own lives? Because we can whine and snivel and, and, and we can feel like we're victims and we can allow life to push us around and we can, we can cave to all kinds of pressures and we can look for a voice that is telling us what we want to hear and, and, and we, can, we can be totally satisfied with all of that. But this thing's going to wind up for all of us. Right. I'm telling you, we are all going to breathe our last one of these days. Yes. Amen. Then what are we going to do? Right. Then what are we going to do if all we've been listening to is lies? What are we going to do if we, we, we've just ruled our own lives by our own authority? We haven't went to the mountain. We're just running our own show. What are we going to do when we get to the end? You see, we, we have a mirror. I, I'm telling you, this book is a mirror. Uh, the law of sin and death came through Moses. Grace and truth comes through Jesus Christ. And, and, and when you get to the new covenant, this is not thou shalt and thou shalt not. That's gone. That's over. That's past. It doesn't exist anymore. And I know people, and I, man, I'm probably not going to be appreciated much for this. I don't care what they do with the Ten Commandments. Not in effect for me. Read the book of Hebrews. Jesus Christ is of a new priesthood, He is not out of Levi. The priest of the law came out of the tribe of Levi. Jesus Christ is born of the tribe of Judah. And He is our high priest. A new priesthood has been established in Jesus Christ. And the Bible says if a new priesthood has been established, then a new covenant has been established doing away with the first. Right. The Ten Commandments only apply to those outside of covenant with God. That's the only people that it applies to. And, and, you know, I don't care if they put them up because it is going to convict the unrighteous. That's fine. I don't care. But it doesn't apply to me. Come on. Come on. And I know people are going, yes, it does. No, it does not. Read your New Testament. It does not apply to us. Oh, brother, Barry, I, know, I, knew, I knew how you were going to react. That's why I haven't said it before tonight. <laughs> This book is only a mirror for us. When we spend time in God's Word, when we look at the New Covenant, all it is doing is showing us where we're at. That's all it's doing. It's revealing 
where we're at. It's revealing, are we walking by the Spirit or are we walking in the flesh? That's all it's showing us. Yeah. You will never become righteous with God by touch not, taste not, handle not. Yeah. God tried that. He gave yeah. us the law from the time of Moses to the time of Jesus Christ yeah. and not a single person, not a yeah. single one was ever righteous because of the law. All sin. All come short. If you ever blaspheme the name of God a single time, if you're going to try to live under the law, if you blaspheme the name of God, if you ever lie, if you ever gossip, if you ever lust, if you ever do it a single time, you're guilty of all the law. That means you're guilty of bestiality. You're guilty of homosexuality. You're guilty of murder. You're guilty of idolatry. Shall I go on? Is that what you want? Not me. I don't want it. No part of it. I want the new covenant established upon better promises. I want what Jesus Christ has done for me. It's not a matter of what I can do for God. It's what God has done for me. And He has bought me and purchased me and made me brand new. Hallelujah. It never happened under the law but a single time. We are not under commandment. We are under grace. Hallelujah. Now we need to walk in grace. We need to live in grace. And we, do, we need to allow grace to have her way in us and not walk according to the flesh. In Galatians 5, you know the list. I mean, here it is. This is the mirror. This, this is what shows you. Am I in the Spirit or am I in the flesh? This is it right here. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality. That means if... It, Here's the deal. I saw this the other day. It's such a good meme. People today are so offended by President Trump's language about third world countries. They're just tore up. Such a horrible thing. Then who bought 80 million copies of Shades of Grey? Right. That's I mean, the same people that bought that book are offended about a four letter word? Right. Get real! That is absolute triple X pornography. It's way worse than a single word. But if you're under the law, that one word is just as bad as everything else. No thank you. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, Discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I could I could break all that down, and, and but I'm not going to. I mean, it's a lot of the a lot of the stuff I was talking about at the beginning. All the dissensions and factions, people just all they do is just blast the rest of the body of Christ. That's dissension. That's a work of the flesh. I'm just exposing evil. No, you're not. You're, yeah, you are. You're exposing the evil of your own heart. That's what you're doing. The Lord told us to love Him and love each other. Man, it is quiet in this United Methodist Church. But the fruit of the Spirit. And, and, and what did He say? He said... Orgies and the like. He said, I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you're in the flesh, you ain't going to make it. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Stay on the mountain getting the, the, the directions for your life from the Lord. Details, details, details. Amen. In Ephesians 4 and 23, I told you there is a part that we do. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. This is what it's all about. You've got to get your mind renewed. When you are born again, you have got to stop thinking like the rest of the world. Hallelujah. Yeah, right? That's true. 
And the only way you're going to do this is get in this book and allow the water of the Word to wash your yes. brain. And here's what you do. That you put on the new man. Put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Hallelujah. Put it on. You know, I love what what Dan Muller says about holiness. The Bible says, Be ye holy, for God is holy. Without holiness, no man will see God. And, and we look at that like uh, we have got to put that, put out the effort to be holy. No, that's not what the Scripture says about us and holiness. The Bible just said the new man is created in holiness. God has already made you holy. So what you need to do is just be holy. <laughs> And whenever you start acting unholy, you just got to have renewing of your mind and start telling yourself, that's not what I'm created to be. That's not who I'm created. That's I am a son or daughter of God. Hallelujah. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It's already been given to you. That's what Jesus has done. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. And that, it, I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about it. We're trying all the, we're making all this effort to be all these things, and all we need to do is just get in Him. Amen. Get in Him. Believe that you're in Him. Believe that God has already done these things. If you are living your life trying to be good, you're going to fail. That's true. I promise you, it, it's not possible for you to be good. It's impossible. No one has ever been good. No, not one. But I'm not just like everybody else in the world because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Yes, yes. Old things are passed away. Behold, everything is made brand new. I am created in the image of God Himself. Hallelujah. That's right. Praise God by what Jesus did. Yeah. See, as long as you have, as long as you're holding out hope in someone other than Jesus, you're never going to walk in this. That's right. If you are holding out hope that one of these days you're going to be a good person, your faith is in you and it's not in God. Yeah. And that's pride. And God hates it. And He's resisting you. It's only the humble, those that say, I have no hope in anyone except your son, Father. He's in it for me. I worship you, and I worship you alone. You're in it, God. There's no other way except your son, Jesus. That's what he's looking for. It says, but now also put off all these. Just take off this stuff. Anger, wrath, Malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man. You've taken this off and put on the new man, which is, it, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Listen to that again. And have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. We are renewed in the knowledge of him that created us. So we got to start figuring out what are the attributes of, attributes of God? What are the things that God has done for us? What is the power that's been released to us? What are these divine, uh, what are these, these promises that allow us to, to partake of the divine nature? What are these things that are available to us? Wow, it's amazing what God is able to do in our lives. It's amazing how He just speaks to us and it's exactly what we need to hear. He's so incredible. And I want you to know today that He loves you. It's no mistake that you joined us today. 
He loves you. And He wants to do a work in your life even greater than you could even dream. I'm telling you, God is able. The Bible says He can do exceedingly and abundantly above anything we could ever ask or think. It's, you know, we've been um, uh, in the ministry for 20 years and we've been saved for over 23 years. And it's, you know, I look back and I think, Lord, look at all that you have done. It's just absolutely incredible, more than we could have ever dreamed. And he continues to just do amazing things, and it's incredible. So I just want to encourage you today. Let him out of the box. Begin to get your eyes on him. He's huge. There's nothing impossible. There's one right now that you're in a situation, and you're thinking it's impossible. I'm telling you, the God that we serve is able to to do the impossible. With Him, all things are possible. That's God. That's God. Get in His Word. Get your eyes focused on Him. Get your eyes off your situation, your problem, whatever it is that's coming against you that you're looking at that it's like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Get your eyes fixed on Him. Trust God. There's nothing He can't do. So I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift that, that one up right now, God, that is facing that that impossible situation that it looks like through their eyes. But God, I pray right now, God, that you would do such a work in their heart, God, that they would get in your word, God, they would speak your word, Lord God, that their eyes would get fixed on you, Lord. And when that happens, Lord, we will realize and we begin to see that there's nothing impossible for you. God, you are amazing. You are incredible, Lord. And we give you the glory for all that you've done and all that you're doing. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next time. Remember, visit us on the website, lfwc.us. God bless you.